Hello everyone, I'm Lisa, I'm a researcher in the CWI Cryptology Group, and I'm very happy to present the work Log Complexity v Pseudorandom Functions in AC012. This is joint work with my wonderful co-authors, Ilet Ball, Jeffrey Couton, Yves Gibua, Yuval Shine, Peter Schott. So let's start at the beginning. Recall that a pseudorandom function is a keyed function that looks like a truly random function. The difference of a victory random function is that we require security only to hold for random inputs instead of chosen inputs. And the security notion we consider here is sub-exponential security. So security against circuits of si a sub-exponential size that have one over sub-exponential advantage. And why is that? Why is that the security notion we aim for? Um, well, for quasi-polynomial security, you get a completely different landscape, as you will also see on a later slide, and exponential security is often just too hard. Um, further step, exponential security is also what you kind of what you get from standard assumptions, such as uh, discrete log factoring, learning with errors. Weak pseudorandom functions have many applications, for example, towards secure communication, where the parties after one time setup can use the weak pseudorandom function evaluated on random inputs as a one time pan. Weak pseudorandom functions can also be used as identification, where a party can show knowledge of the shared key by replying to random challenges. The question we reconsider in this work is what is the lowest complexity class we can hope to construct weak pseudorandom functions in? This question is at the intersection of many interesting areas. First, if you can have a big PRF in a low complexity class, it typically gives you efficient symmetric key primitives. For example, highly parallelizable stream ciphers and simple message authentication codes. Second, it has implications to learning theory, which asks the questions of which functions can be learned efficiently through black box success. And if a complexity class contains a weak PRF, then this class cannot be learned under the uniform distribution, so it gives limitations in learning theory. Third, the existence of low complexity symmetric objects has been related to the existence of high-end cryptography. For example, constant locality BRGs gives constant overhead secure computation. The low complexity classes we focus on in this work are variants of AC0. Um, so AC0 is the complexity class of circuits with end and OR gates of polynomial Fanon and constant depth, as you can see here in the slide. And uh, we will consider also AC0 on top of parities, where additionally to the end and OR gates, there is a layer of XOR gates allowed uh, at the bottom. And more generally, we will consider AC0 mod 2, where the XOR gates are just allowed at arbitrary layers. And uh, finally, that's not the focus of our work, but it will also come up. So I'll mention here is ACC0, where there are arbitrary mod gates, uh, so mod two, mod three, and so on, uh, allowed at arbitrary layers. Here you can see an overview of our previous work. Uh, if you want to look at it more thoroughly, you can pause or go to our paper. But what I want to stress is the following. First, there are basically two approaches to constructing weak PRFs. One is to build on standard assumptions like factoring, decisional Diffie-Hillman, learning with errors. And the other one is to put forward new assumptions for which known attacks can be ruled out or plausibly do not apply. So heuristic here basically means not used in previous work, but might become standard in the future. And in this work, we follow the heuristic approach. And the second thing I want to mention is if you look at the orange parts here, we know that in AC0, there cannot exist weak PRFs with better than quasi-polynomial security by the famous result of Lineal Mansour and Nissan. And on the other hand, we know that above um, AC0 mod 2, there exists even strong, per, um, strong PRFs. So we, we do have candidate co constructions of strong PRFs. So um, in this work, we focus on the area in between where so far there's only one candidate weak PRF with, uh, with more than quasi-polynomial security, as, as you can see here. 
So let's take a closer look at the area in between, uh, starting with AC0 mod 2. Uh, so as you already saw on the last slide, if you're fast enough, in the recent work, we brought forward the candidate week PRF computed by an XNF formula, which is basically DNF, where instead of disjunctions, you have XORs. And what we show in this work is that you can go even lower um, to sparse F2 polynomials. So similar to X and F formula, but without negation in the inputs. Going to AC0 on top of parities, there was a candidate weak pair F brought forward by a caveat all in 2014. But unfortunately, it was shown later that their candidate can be broken in quasi-polynomial time by so-called algebraic or rational degree attack that I will explain in a bit more detail later. In this work, we show how we can fix this candidate and bring forward a new candidate weak pair F in AC0 on top of parities, the only one currently known that plausibly has sub-exponential security. So let's start with the candidate weak pair of computed by sparse F2 polynomials. The starting point is the previous candidate in AC0 mod 2. As you can see here, the candidate is an XOR of n's where the n terms are increasingly biased towards zero. And the intuition behind this construction, very roughly, is that the more samples one sees, the more of these terms will kick in, meaning that given very few samples, these are indistinguishable from random because of the low degree, the low order n terms. And the more samples are giving out, the more noise by the higher degree terms will be added. And this candidate, if you write it in a different way, can, can also be viewed as learning parity with variable density noise, where if you see it like this, you can think of the higher degree terms corresponding to the sparser noise. And the outer XOR is important to ensure that linear attacks fail. So linear attacks um, are an attack framework that captures large classes of attacks that um, apply to learning parity with noise-like assumptions, and uh, such as Gaussian elimination, statistical decoding, information set decoding, and BKW. And as already mentioned, the X and F formula is basically a sparse multivariate F2 polynomial in inputs and their negation. So what we wanted to do in this work is getting rid of the negation part. So how can we do this? Um, the idea is quite simply, namely, instead of letting the key decide which variable to negate or not negate, is to let the key decide which variable to choose from a set of possible variables. And of course, the, the simplest attempt, the first attempt that you would try out is just take two variables. So add another copy of variables to x, and then for each term decide uh, between x i j k and x i j k prime. Unfortunately, that does not work. There's a simple attack with this um, because the problem is that both x i j k and x i j k prime are zero with a too large probability with probability one fourth. And if that happens, the whole n term will be canceled out. And this is also um, public when you know the when you know the input. And, and this is what happens for random input, which you get to see for weak PRFs. And now the solution is um, also still quite straightforward. Um, you can circumvent this by not choosing between two, but by choosing between sufficiently many, then this, that all of them are zero will, will happen only with very, very small probability. And, um, and this attack does no longer apply. So then instead of x, i, j, k, X or the key, what we will do is having the key pick which of the terms X, which of the variables X, I, J, K to pick. And we can indeed show that uh, this, uh, this candidate, as the candidate before, provably resists linear attacks up to two to the D samples if now W and B are chosen large enough. And uh, the analysis for this is similar to the previous an analysis, but more involved to the to, due to the structure. 
So what you can see here is that the extra layers in the top. So the next question we ask in this work is, what if you allow the X or layer only in the bottom? So what if you go to AC0 on top of parities? As I mentioned before, we're not the first who consider this question. So let's take a look at the candidate construction from 2014. So on the slide, uh, you see the weak PRFF here with keys S and K. And the design par paradigm is as follows. G is chosen such that uh, it is a function in AC0 that is not too biased. So it has constant bias and it's also called the tribes function. And then K is used to hide the heavy Fourier coefficients that we know G has because of the result of lineal Mansour and Nissan. And finally, the bias is removed to get from a constant bias weak PRF to a random weak PRF um, by adding a parity of X with a part of this, a fresh part of the secret key S. This way of achieving a weak PRF um, can also be viewed as learning parity with simple deterministic noise, where here the noise function is determined by the function, the public function G and the secret key K. This candidate can be shown to resist linear attacks based on a simple combinatorial conjecture. The problem is that it can be broken in quasi-polynomial time by a so-called algebraic or rational degree attack, as was shown by Bogdanov and Rosen in 2017. In order to see how we overcome this issue, let's take a look at uh, so-called algebraic or rational degree attacks. The idea behind this attack is that if one can find a low degree polynomial h such that g times h equals zero or g plus one times h equals zero, then given input output pairs, one can solve for h given n to the degree of h samples. So for h with logarithmic degree, this gives an attack in quasi-polynomial time. Recall that the AC series circuit in the construction of Akavia et al. is of the following form. Now Bogdanov and Rosen observed that it always holds g plus 1 times gi equals 0 for any of the inner n terms gi. Therefore, the candidate weak pair f of Akavia has rational degree logarithmic in the security parameter and can therefore be broken by rational degree attack and quasi-polynomial time. Furthermore, this is inherent for DNFs because either at least one of the ends has low fan in, resulting in low rational degree, or the function is very biased towards zero, and the corresponding candidate could therefore be broken by a linear attack. So how to overcome this? The idea is to consider the two cases of the rational degree attack separately. So call the minimal degree of H such that G times H equals zero, the primal rational degree, and call the minimal degree of H prime such that G plus one times H prime is zero, the dual rational degree of G. And with this, if we reconsider the function from the slide before, a bit more general, just a disjunction of functions, then with the same observation, it's a bit less straightforward than what you saw on the slide before, but it's still very easy to see that the disjunctions in some sense don't, don't increase the dual rational degree. They don't help increasing the rational de degree by increasing the dual rational degree, because the dual rational degree is just the minimum of the dual rational degrees of all the, um, of all its terms. And, but on the other hand, what we, what we um, show in this work, what we can provably show is that it does something to the primal rational degree. And namely what it does, if all the terms are independent, so operate on this joint set of variables, then the primal rational degree is the sum of all the primal rational degrees of the underlying terms. And so, this alone doesn't give much because the rational degree is the minimum of the primal rational degree and the dual rational degree. But now if we look at an n term, it's very easy to see that this just behaves dual to the, to the or. 
And so there we have that the primal rational degree is not increased, but the dual rational degree is now the sum of the dual rational degrees of all the GI. So by the previous slide, we know that the OR increases the primal rational degree and the AND increases the dual rational degree. So we can provably increase the rational degree, which is the minimum of the primal and the dual rational degree, uh, just by adding sufficiently many alternating layers. It turns out that we only have to add one more layer compared to the function of a caveat at all. And again, we have to choose the fan in such that the function is not too biased. And this candidate now has high rational degree by the considerations before, because we have the and and the or of sufficiently high fan in, so the two outer layers. And further, it again plausibly resists linear attacks based on a combinatorial conjecture. So that was our first candidate. Note here that the parities are secret, whereas the AC Sear circuit is public. So the next question we considered in the work is, in some sense, can you do the other way around? Can you get a weak pair F in AC Sear on top of public parities? So why do we care about this? The motivation of having a weak pair F in AC Sear on top of public parities is that it would give a weak pair F that is pseudo-random on random code words. This would directly imply a stateless symmetric encryption scheme with the encryption circuit fully in AC0 just by plugging in the weak pair F in the encryption scheme I presented earlier. This is something that we do not currently know to exist. In their work, Akavia et al. brought forward a conjecture regarding functions in AC0 on top of parities, saying that every function in this class has a heavy Fourier coefficient, meaning of size one over quasi-polynomial. We strengthen their conjecture by saying that this heavy Fourier coefficient stems from some low order Fourier coefficient by applying the transpose of the linear mapping describing the mod two layer. Similar to a caveat all for their original conjecture, we show that this is provably true if M is a random map independently of the AC series circuit G and if G is a DNF or CNF independently of the map M. Our strengthening would imply that no weak pair F in AC0 on top of public parities with better than quasi-polynomial security can exist. This conjecture together with our weak pair F candidate has also implications to linear IPPP, which is the conjecture that the inner product mod two cannot be computed in AC0 on top of parities. Namely, if there exists a weak PRF on top of parities, but there does not exist a weak PRF on top of public parities, then we show that linear IPP must indeed be true. Finally, in our paper, we ask how the existence of weak PRFs in AC0 mod 2 relates to other assumptions. A caveat et al. already showed that weak PRFs on top of parities imply learning parity with noise with high noise rate, if indeed every function in AC0 on top of parities has a heavy Fourier coefficient. We, in some sense, strengthen their result by showing that weak pairs in all of AC0 mod 2 imply learning parity with noise for a specific code and noise rate, where our implication holds unconditionally. Further, we show that weak PRFs that fall into the variable density learning parity with noise framework, which includes our candidate weak PRF computed by sparse F2 polynomials, imply public key encryption under an additional conjecture. This conjecture basically says that if there exists some code that is hard to decode with respect to some noise rate, then almost all codes are. It is an interesting open question whether this result can be shown unconditionally and or extended to AC0 mod 2 more generally. To summarize, in this paper, we brought forward new candidate weak pair Fs with sub-exponential security. Our first candidate weak pair F is computed by sparse F2 polynomials. It fits into the variable density learning parity with noise framework. 
it provably resists linear attacks, and it also has provably high rational degrees, so it's not susceptible to algebraic attacks. Our second result is a candidate weak pair of an AC0 on top of parities. This is the currently only standing candidate, which can be conjectured to have full sub-exponential security. This candidate is within the learning parity with simple noise framework. It plausibly resists linear attacks and it has a provably high rational degree. So with this, I would like to end. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you got interested and we'll look up more in the paper. Thank you.